Ready? To the microphone line. Work, work, work. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast. You're listening to episode 28 10. This is the end of season 28. And we're your hosts. My name is Rob Nichols. And I am my friend Pernello. And every week we listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. And, and I guess we're starting this show with music, with songs. Yeah, because yeah. Show tunes. Yeah. Because we play games, and now we get lame when we talk about games mm. on the microphone time. Oh, yeah. Oh, talk yeah. about music. <laughs> <laughs> I just missed that. Harry Belafonte. Didn't he? He passed away, didn't he? Um, I'm about to say rest. May he rest in peace. I'm going to say yes. What if you ask me anybody else today, I'm going to say, yeah, he passed away. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald McDonald passed away? Yes, he did. All right. Um. So this is the summer of 16-bit. We're still deep in it, Brunel. We are. It is becoming it's going hot. Much more so challenging. It's so depending on the topic, it's become quite challenging because I stand by my goal of including all the systems on every episode I that we do this yes. on. And depending on the topic, I might not even have an option. <laughs> I might just be rolling in mud like I hope there's a game that fits this classification or one of these three systems. Well, I know that you've been having some trouble. So I thought I would call someone in for a little help. Oh, a specialist? Yes, <laughs> yes, a, a, a console specialist. Oh man, who'd uh, you get? Who'd you get? You know what? Everyone, everyone was super busy. Ed was busy. Mike from XVGM Radio was busy. Hammock said he could come by, but then he he totally just forgot, and he's sleeping in his hammock because Aqua City's super chill. But we know who we got. My fourth pick. Hey, you! <laughs> first and foremost. <laughs> Well, first of all, who is he? Oh, it's Carlos Kung Fu Carlito from the Heroes 3 podcast, and you might have heard him on a bunch of other uh, video game music podcasts, but he's going to be the best one here. Now, what I'm going <laughs> to now I got to clarify. Now that the word's out, he ain't no fourth. Carlos is number one, damn it. Number one. <laughs> number one, Car- Carlos. We, we, At least out of the Heroes 3, <laughs> I would be three. <laughs> <laughs> but you're our number one hero, Carlos. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll stop talking for a minute here to let you talk. But thanks for coming on the show. And why don't you tell our audience who you are and what you're all about? Hello. Um, my name is Carlos. Thanks, guys, for having me on again. Mm-hmm. Last time we were talking about some La Mulana. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it'd be easy for us to get sidetracked talking about that. But today we're going to be talking <laughs> about martial arts and, I guess, 16-bit games. So um, not just fighting games any any type of game right and and i i love how you guys will interpret things so i'm excited to see where we <laughs> go with this today <laughs> i will say we just sidetracked on la Mulana for one statement though oh, no. which is oh, that uh, when no. we yeah it's just you stop <laughs> so i know where you're going I'll, yeah i, know I hope where you're you going. do but so mm-hmm. we did that episode it's been months now like be- mm-hmm. back before the summer even or maybe like in the so in that time Karen Werner was playing La Mulana 2. Yeah. He was playing. He was, quote unquote, in it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He ain't finished yet. That's like a call out <laughs> that's on the <laughs> show. Yeah, that's what you hear. Man, people got work to do. Come hey, on. Yo, no, yo, <laughs> Dar work to do. <laughs> he beat the Dar game. He's playing like five Metroids. Beat the he game. did just say that. Yeah, he, 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 he took a little sabbatical from La Mulana 2 to play a bunch of other great games, which is fine. But, but what uh, kills me? I, I feel like he was he's way more hardcore than I was for the game. Like the dude takes notes like it's a college class and it's <laughs> supremely commendable, man. But yeah. that's the thing that makes it so baffling is that he's at the end. Like all of his effort, all of his work, <laughs> he's at the end of the game. And he he's just won't it. pull the trigger. Just finish it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's he's worried about about, about finishing the game because no, then it's over forever, man. He wrapped up Yeah, La he loves it so problem, much. Yeah. But he wrapped up La Milana 1 like, snap back. Crack is done. Because, I mean, the, the, the first child always gets left behind, but the second child gets the most love, right? <laughs> oh, is, that's also like a La Mulana reference, isn't it, Rob? <laughs> I but, don't, but the ninth <laughs> child, we don't even know what happens to that guy. I, <laughs> yeah, it, in La Mulana, the, yeah, there's different races and they're all the different numbered child, Rob. Oh, okay. I see. I started playing the first one. Did not finish yeah. it. 
Barely started. Yeah, the, <laughs> barely started. No, I got, meat, man. I, I, I got, well, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I found the whip. <laughs> I learned there was a temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still playing a persona. I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll get there. My, it's my goal, right? So 2021, finish Persona 5. It's like, hey, guys, nice. chill. I now, I got to the part where they learned about personas. I'm getting there. By, by December, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to try to finish Persona 5 before there's a Persona 6. And then Persona Six comes along. He's like, for real though. For real though. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start six. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Robert. I'll get, I'll get around. You call me Robert? <laughs> These are the times where I have to go full in. <laughs> oh, you're Robert. <laughs> wow. Come on. Persona Five, finish it. I, I, I don't know. Final Fantasy Tits call it a gift. This is what happens. This is what happens when we have friends on the show. You, you, get, you, get, a little, you get sassy. This is where Persona <laughs> gets brought up. Punchy. It's like, live with live. I can call Cameron whatever his long version of his name is. Cameron. Ran, ran, ran. Like, <laughs> like, I got to come up with a longer version than Cameron. Yeah. But, you know, that's how I get. Like, come on, just wrap it up. <laughs> Well, they announced DLC content for La Mulana too, so oh, he's got to finish it so he can play the like the really hard stuff because it sounds like it's going to be even more challenging than Hell Temple in the first game. I was say, if it's which like I, Hell Temple, none of us are beating it, so let's just wrap <laughs> well, that up. Well, I, I never beat that. Yeah, I never beat that. I never beat that because I'm not a, I'm not that insane. <laughs> Hell <laughs> yeah. Temple was hot garbage in the difficulty scale. Like it was not. And you were already playing on like super hard mode, right? Yeah. And it's like, but even yeah, he was limiting himself. Oh man, that was so crazy, dude. <laughs> well, I, yeah, that's right. You're you, crazy. You, you did a playthrough where you you just it was like whip only, right? Yeah. No sub weapons. Oh man. That, but that's fun. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just I'm just busting on you now because you'll I know you'll bust on me later. So. Oh yeah, but. The thing, is, get, the thing is, you have no long version of my name to use. Pernell is all you got. Yeah, I'm gonna say <laughs> Pernell. <laughs> Pernell Othamu. <laughs> Pernell. Pernell Othamu. <laughs> Pernell Othamu. There we go. There we go. That, that, I'm gonna call you that. And Christy is gonna crack. Pernell Stuffer. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pernell Tholomy is my favorite. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a Carlos. I was, was going to try to call you by your, by your middle name, but I just remember, I don't know. I don't think I know your middle name. So I right. kept it secret yeah, I think on purpose. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, it's a real secret? Yeah. Wow, yeah. amazing. That Rob doesn't know your middle name is really... That's impressive. I know. We've, I've known each other almost 20 years. And I know Rob's is Aloysius, so there probably you go. Probably more than 20 Boom. years. <laughs> Aloysius. <laughs> hey, my last, my middle name's Aloysius. Bam! See, uh, both of you have the same middle name. How yeah. coincidence. I, I use my full name everywhere. I've just given up. I've given up on the internet. I've, I've had too many, um, I've had too many pseudonyms and like handles and nicknames that you'll find me on Discord as Rob Nichols. It's fine. <laughs> I, I can't keep track of it anymore. <laughs> also, like, uh, it seems more. My son's name is also Pernell Tholomew. <laughs> Honestly, I take that as an honor. I know it ain't. Re- I know it's not true, but I kind of wish it were. Um, Pernell, we're all out of per- Pernell Tholomew license plates. <laughs> no, my son's also named Pertholomew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, we're doing this week. We're doing martial arts in video games, not necessarily martial arts video games, um, mainly because Carlos is his other podcast is all about martial arts movies. Is that right? Yeah. I, we talk about Asian cinema with a definite lean on uh, Hong Kong cinema, <laughs> Kung Fu movies, a lot of this stuff. Recently, we did do a block of Chambara films, which are all like samurai cool. cinema, mm-hmm. and that was super fun, and I found a ton of movies that I loved because of it. But yeah, we're, we're kind of all over the place, but it's it's usually got some roundhouse kicks in it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, one thing I feel like I should point out, because the first thing that comes to mind when I think about like when the topic of kung fu movies came up, and now I do like kickboxing exercise stuff, so I'm not really in the ring. I still have all my teeth, but I do punches and kicks, and I actually have a decent stance nowadays. However, do kung fu movies still always make those some those sound effects of impactful punches and kicks? Like, mm. quack, 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 quack. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I feel like. Yeah, in in the modern era, it's not as prominent as it used to be, but there's still definitely, I mean, of course, any movie has Foley work, and you're still going to want to hear the hits. You know, the sound really sells the action as well, but like back in the 70s, you know, you'd have like a huge paper fan slamming (laughs) on a wall. (laughs) 
<laughs> or they'd have like a huge blanket and they're just shaking a blanket so you hear their clothes moving. Oh, I, love, I love that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I, I love, love it, it on the movies, but when you try to translate to real life, it kills everything. Like, oh, yeah. Because no, like you're you trying to punch it. a bag and you're like throwing yeah. your punches. You just start doing that thing where you whistle. It's like, whoo, 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 yeah. Because you want your <laughs> fist to move like they sound in the films. Like, I want my fist to whistle. So, when like, I'm I'll sit behind you with like a whole, like a big thing of celery, so that when you punch like the punchy bag, I go. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, it sounds yeah, like you're busting that. someone's back. No, when okay, so here's 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 one here's a high school Robbie deep cut story, and then we'll get into some music because I. Uh, this just, just dredged up something from the depths. <laughs> so you, you remember Chris, right? Yes. Okay. So we were, we were, we were like, we were really close in high school. Like we would get in trouble all the time as we make each other laugh too much. And um, for math class, we had to do these big projects. It was in geometry or something. And we had to make this big project related to different theorems, or it was like either do like a cartoon or do like a poster. And oh, so, like Pythagorean theorem, or yeah, yeah, and like like triangles and stuff like that. And so we decided to Pernal do Ptolemy theorem. <laughs> that's a great theorem. It's yeah, it's all of yeah. That's got a lot of sides to it. And a tall plus b tall <laughs> equals he tall <laughs> equals giant mm-hmm. white shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, so. So we were really into mystery science theater and really into like Jackie Chan movies and stuff like that. So we got um, we got a, a kung fu movie on VHS. It was called Tai Chi Fists of Death, or maybe it was oh. just called Tai Chi. Do you, I, I don't know if you. Oh, know. the Ronin Warrior sequel. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> and so what we did was we um, we I got, we got a video camera, like a, like a like one of those tape recorders, uh-huh. put it in front of the TV, and we turned the sound off. And then me and Chris wrote a script and we were like as the guys were fighting we were like oh you cannot defeat me because a triangle has three sides and the two sides must be opposite of like we <laughs> oh <laughs> man and then we went on for way too long and uh yeah, that's great got an a on it got an a and, they, and i heard there were still he was she was she was still showing it for like the next like five or six years oh really yeah oh that's awesome that's and, awesome oh, and then my senior in the senior year in the um in the yearbook we had to put, like, yeah, you put like a quote where it's like, see ya, everybody, or like, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Or, <laughs> or so my, my entire, and if you can find this, uh, you have to figure out what high school I went to, but um, I did my entire <laughs> senior quote in binary. Oh, that's awesome. And I left it in there. And, wow. and, and yeah, and so the next year, I heard that um, the teacher was, was making that like part of like the like extra credit. You have to decode my message. That was really in, and she couldn't use it for the class? Yeah, she used it for the class. And then they decoded it, and they realized it said, I hate everyone. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That's high school, though. I mean, high school broke people. That's high school amazing. broke you know, it wasn't like broke me. It wasn't terrible. I'm, I'm happy to be where I'm at today. I'm happy to be out of high school. Yeah, me I, too. People always <laughs> like, oh, we're going to go back to being young. <laughs> me too, but without the high school part. So Unless I, I went back okay, to the knowledge like, exploit it. Looking back on it, I do wish I put like something a little bit more interesting. Thing. I hate everyone, but I loved celery sticks. Like I don't know, like just uh, like a RoboCop quote or something. But like I'll be back because I hate. But everybody. something that was like so definitive, <laughs> like you know what you thought I liked you, you, you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some Zodiac killer stuff. I know. <laughs> <laughs> a little worried about that. <laughs> they meet Rob today. Is like so you're the guy who hated everybody. What are you doing now? <laughs> well, I promote positivity on a video game <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah at the uh, we had our um, our uh, our uh, anniversary the um, what's it called reunion we had our twenty year high school reunion and yeah no one acted like I was weird so I mean I didn't know anybody because I didn't really talk to anybody in high school <laughs> I was because they didn't put the mom. time in to decode your quote <laughs> yeah like, right oh you're the zero and ones guy you must <laughs> really like math uh, before we get kicked off on the show any further I got two shout outs I want to give to first of all I want to give a Huge, huge shout out to our listener, Micah Busan. I think that's how you say your last name. Uh, he's out there. He's an animation wizard. So check him out. Micah Busan, M-I-C-A-H-B-U-Z-A-N. Check him out on YouTube. Doing um, incredible stuff. Really, really cool. Um, cool. Like really trippy stuff. I'm really into it. And also another huge shout out to our friend over in Germany, Khalid Hamad. I'm glad you did because I was looking up. <laughs> I was going to do it. I love getting an email from him. Um, thank you very, very much for, for those kind words. My fellow metalhead. And also for the record, I also was a major fan of Descent back in the day. And that Rye Star cover you sent for Rob. Oh, my God. 
that would have converted me too. Mm. That thing is really good. It was a splashdown cover. We might oh, mention it later on for other people to so look good. up. We'll have to have that Rice Star episode pretty soon. Okay. Um, let's get started with some music. We're going into the 16 bit world of martial arts, right? Thank you. That's and- right. <laughs> All right, um, we're going to start off with Carlos, please. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm the guest. You got to start with me. <laughs> no, no, you're, one of the, you're just one of the gang. You're no guest. You're just one of us. I mean, like, if you were like, hey, guys, I'm going to be on your show, but I don't want to play any music or do anything. I don't, I'm just going to stand in the corner and just listen. You could do that. <laughs> the <laughs> wallflower is Carlos. <laughs> and any past, any past guests, if you just want to come back and, like, chill, like, that's totally cool, but... Um, that's awesome. If you want to come back and just breathe into the microphone for an hour and a half, I guess if that's what floats your boat, yeah, that's, that's cool uh-huh. too. Hey, Carlos, <laughs> how, wasn't that funny? <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carlos is is there. Wow. <laughs> Let's move on. I think he's got the flu or something. Um, all right, anyway, if you got to put you to work, Carlos. What's your first track? Yeah. All right, so um, my first track is actually, I guess I'm calling back to uh, you guys from a couple episodes ago. So uh, this is going to be from City Hunter for PC Engine. And the track is from the first area, stage one. It's called Gone with the Beauty. to stage one gone with the beauty from the game city hunter for the pc engine turbo graphics 16 i can't remember if we had a composer for this one we did well i tried i tried to look for one and actually i even looked through the credits in the game and the game credits are like a cast list of the characters they don't say anybody that <laughs> really? worked on the game <laughs> yeah i was like thanks but it's a sunsoft game and it, it's actually kind of cool it's like a rolling thunder like rip <laughs> basically <laughs> you're running and going in and out of doors and stuff but you're playing as uh, uh rio saiba from city hunter and the, yeah the reason i'm bringing it in is because you guys mentioned it a little bit but um jackie chan was in the city hunter film which oh, is interesting yeah. too because it's a hong kong film based on a japanese manga which i think is pretty cool and that's the so, thing. So, like, when I chose it for the show, I originally was like playing with the idea because, like, I, I believe that it's like Jackie just said. But depending on where you were on the internet, people were trying to claim that it had no relation to the City Hunter manga or anything like that. And I'm like, well, well it's I can't it, it's a hidden. it's a loose, it's very loose adaption <laughs> of the, the source material. And the the director uh, Wong Jing. Mm-hmm. He's, he's kind of a notorious kind of schlocky director in Hong Kong. And uh, just around this time, he had also done a film called Future Cops, which is kind of an infamous film that we talk about on Heroes 3 now and then that was going to originally be a Street Fighter 2 movie, but they didn't get the rights, <laughs> but they still made the movie with like Street Fighter characters in it. That's awesome. <laughs> so he just gave them like wacky yeah. names, like instead of God, he was like U.S. Marine Man. There's literally, like, the Guile characters, like, Broomhead. <laughs> <laughs> Chun Li is Maggie Wong. That is awesome. And Ryu is 
Ryan. Oh, um, so the, the composer that I have for City Hunter for the Turbo Graphics is Tatsumi Yano. That's what oh, that's what I found last okay. time, and mm. I want to stick with it, you know, because Electric Boogaloo didn't tell me I was wrong, so I'm gonna <laughs> stick with it. <laughs> nice, what, yeah. If anybody would know, it'd be EB. So yeah, EB, maybe he can give us some insight. They are the uh, they are the the dictionary, the Bible. VGM they the, Bible. They are the VGM head. Like, if, yeah. somebody, if something needs to be clarified, we go to the source. Um, <laughs> Jackie Chan, right? The other th- sorry, yeah, yeah. So the the other thing that's kind of awesome that I love about City Hunter is, I don't know if you guys remember, but there's a scene towards the end of the film. Um, they're, they're like, the, the movie takes place mostly on this cruise ship, but then in the cruise ship, there's actual arcade, and Jackie is fighting a couple of characters That's in the arcade, yeah. and he gets tossed into a Street Fighter 2 machine, and then he gets, like, dizzied, and he wakes up, and the, the guy that he's fighting is Ken. So, yeah. um, and he's he dressed up the, as Chun-Li, right? Yeah, yeah, he changes into a couple of characters, but yeah, so there's, like, a, I mean, for at the time, and I mean, arguably... For me, it's the best Street Fighter live action movie. <laughs> just that scene. <laughs> Honestly, it probably is for a lot of people. Yeah. Like, it was. I mean, because what did we have? We had that really rough '90s one where the only good thing about it was Raw Julia, and oh. then beyond that, the yeah, anime there's the lot. I like. Yeah, I like the animated versions of Street Fighter um, to different degrees. But yeah, the live action. I think the Jean Claude Van Damme film is a fun movie if you just like whatever. But it, it honestly was like one of my first disappointments mm. growing up. <laughs> who, who played um, Cammy again? That was uh, the singer um, Kylie Minogue. Kylie Minogue. Okay, you know what? Yeah, she's That's pretty great. Awesome. She can fight. I she, mean, she's pretty awesome. I've seen her throw down yeah. the street. I, her not okay. Her not recording music for that movie is a crime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Totally, yeah. Then they made that Legend of Chun Li film, and that I don't, I still oh. haven't seen it, and I don't want to see I it. I remember seeing the posters for that and being like, ooh. Is that yeah. terrible? Yeah. I wager it is. Bad. I didn't even give it a chance. Yeah. I was already burned out. I used to watch Bad Jackie news. Chan movies um, in junior high. We used to go to the, the Tri State Mall on the weekends, and we would watch the Jackie Chan movies there because they were super cheap, and they, were, they would play, awesome. play older ones too. Oh, Tri-State Mall. That was not a fun place to be. <laughs> hey, I bought garbage pill kids there, so that's good enough for me. No, yeah, yeah. I bought I bought a lot of like sound equipment there from uh, Sound of Tri-State. <laughs> Shady little place. Um, okay, uh, I'm digging this tune. Let's stick with the chippy sound. I'm gonna pick from uh, Yu Yu Hakusho Makio Toitusen, which um, I forget what that translates to but it's for it's from the cartoon Yu Yu Hakusho you didn't know what it translated to no I don't know but it's based on the part like the, the arc of the of the cartoon that's, that's the dark tournament oh the tournament arc yeah the yeah. one that it was notoriously rough because like it lasted like three seasons <laughs> yes <laughs> and so this is the music for the character Jin J-I-N and he was like a, he was recruited into the dark tournament so it's all about martial arts and this track is called I'm Jin say something if you can um, and I uh, have composers on this track is Akihara, Katsuhiku, Suzuki, Kazuo Hansawa, and Satoshi Murata, some classic Konami po- composers. Yeah. On Yu-Yu. some good stuff right here. Oh yeah, we're it's, yeah we're getting we're starting with the jams. We're, I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. holding back. <laughs> Oh, 
Yes. You're listening to Yu Yu Hakusho uh, Makio Toishin for the Sega Mega Drive, composed by Akihata, Katsuhiku Suzuki, Kazuo Hanzawa, and Satoshi Murata. This is I'm Jin. Say something if you can. It was interesting. Actually, like, just doing. This show came up in my circle recently because there was talk of like uh, yes. who would be considered like the anime greats as far as like main characters go. Like you know, so the idea would be like they use this template of like the original big three from like the early two thousands. And I hate saying original because anime has been around way longer than that. But anyway, <laughs> the original. <laughs> what do you mean by original? So that was the first yeah, time I ever well. heard. So when I say original big three, I mean it was the first time I'd ever heard anyone use that context to describe like manga or anime, mm. and it was basically mm. meant to say the shows or manga that were like the big revenue drivers in Japan at the time. And at the mm. time, they were Bleach, One Piece, and Naruto. Um, and then they threw Dragon Ball up there because even though Dragon Ball hadn't been getting released since the 80s at that point, mm. it was still so popular that it was still considered one of the greats. So they took the guy from Bleach off because that manga and show just kind of tanked at a certain point. Mm. And they were like, who should fill that spot? And they named a couple people, and one of them was Yusuke. Hanamura, I think, no, 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 Hanamura was from the freaking Persona 4. Yeah, but yeah. the main character in Yu Yu Hakusho is named Yusuke. I just don't remember what his last Yusuke. name is. Um, it was him, the kid from Hunter Cross Hunter. Um, let me see, who else was there? Like, the kid from um, My Hero Academia, and then one other character who's eluding me right now. And I was like, well, once upon a time it was, you know, the guy from Bleach, but now it was. Probably the kid from Hunter Cross Hunter. I don't freaking know. But uh Yeah, it sounds like some new heads talking about anime though. Some kids. Oh, Those, it that sounds like was. younger stuff, you know? Oh, it definitely was younger stuff because what happens is people tend to forget about a lot of the older shows. Not because they don't like them, but just because and I stay I do genuinely believe this. Back when we were coming up watching anime. We got what we could get our hands on. And I'm talking, this was before the quote-unquote big three I described, even. We're talking, like, late 90s. Yeah, you got some you got some Rama one-half tapes, and you were like, Ooh, yeah. You were Rama cloud one-half. nine. You braved the Actually, adult oh. video section because you <laughs> wanted to get freaking, uh, like, <laughs> yeah. normal anime, but since the store clerks had no idea where to put it, it was like, oh, my God, this is so confusing. We'll put I, it with the adult movies, which I makes no have, sense. I know, but that makes no sense. That was so weird. They were like, well, it's all hentai, right? So let's just put it all together. Yeah, so um, it was like you went and you got what you could get, but as a yeah. result... There, there wasn't a very large pool for us to work from compared to what existed overseas. Mm-hmm. So once the internet began rolling and digital, you know, you could just like stream TV onto like the internet and Crunchyroll came a thing. Now everything Ooh. Japan gets is coming here. Dang near. So yeah. it's not as special as it used to be. It may as well just be mm-hmm. the anime networks. <laughs> you just <laughs> watch anime and only anime if you really want to. That's so. True. It's harder. That's all people have their heads around because it's, it's coming so quickly, so frequently that nothing really sticks. Yeah, it's it's like it's just like any other pop culture now, right? Or any any pop culture media where it's just so fast. There's so much of it that now now overseas from Japan to America, we're feeling the same thing. Where it's like, oh, there's so much of it. You know, what's mm-hmm. going to stick? Um, it made me think I should have picked from a Rama one half game. Yes, e- you should have. Because everything yeah. they did was no holds. No, was it no holds barred? Anything goes. It was martial anything arts goes blank. martial arts. Yeah, anything yeah. goes martial nope. arts tea ceremonies. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think my ice, favorite was still. Ice pit. <laughs> oh, the ice skating was great. Yeah, but I think my skating. favorite is still anything goes martial arts ramen delivery. Yes, and then the character yeah. that were ramen ramen roundup noodle noose. <laughs> what was her name? I don't remember shampoo. the name of the girl who did the ramen. It was a what episode character? Oh, uh, well, I know. Like the shampoo would be delivering ramen. She'd yeah. be on her bike. Well, yeah, this, this, this specific episode, it was a uh, rom rom getting my head sewed Ranma off to like this restaurant tier's <laughs> daughter as a as a potential husband. So in order to win his freedom, he had to win the anything goes martial arts rom delivery race. So they had to take a bowl of piping hot ramen in a box across the country. And not spill a drop of it and get it delivered. So they were all fighting and running while carrying ramen. Yeah, I remember and that one. There it was go. just ridiculous how at the end the character took like, took the ramen bowl she was supposed to be delivering, and then took the ramen, turned into like a whip, yeah, and ripped it around Rama's is. neck and tried to strangle him with Her it. Her name was Kaori Daikoku. 
It was so nice. weird. There it was, she is. And the, the announcer's like, she did her finishing move, Robin Roundup Noodle Noose. <laughs> was like, what? That was called the Clash of the Delivery Girls, the martial arts takeout race. Um, that and was I fun. think that, yeah, Ranma really did have like roots in Kung Fu cinema too because it was very Chinese aesthetics yes. to everything. Yeah. And it was always about what the martial arts style of this opponent would be and how do you defeat them. But it was always train. goofy. Even yeah. down to, um, wasn't it her father or, or their father? Wasn't, wasn't he a, like he turned himself into a panda all the time. Yeah, so what happened yeah, was like the great. main crux of the show was that him and his dad were cursed to turn into various things when they get hit with water. Rama became a girl, and his dad became a panda. Rama hated yep. being a girl, though, honestly, I still call that lip service because he exploited the heck out of that. And Genma learned to really like being a panda. Yeah, and, so. I, and I imagine that Rama also enjoyed being a girl, too. So he used to say that Rama didn't get splashed with water, and then she turned into a man. Oh, no, no, like, no, what it was was that, like, so he was like, he, he learned he could, like, he could, like, free food with it. Like, he turned to a girl oh, I and get free I food know, and stuff like that. But, like, uh, and also he learned eventually through the episodes of the martial arts aspect was that as a girl, he was smaller and faster. So he and was faster. able to fight quicker. And that's how he ended up learning yep. the, the chestnuts roasting on open fire was he used his ability as a girl to work faster mm-hmm. with moving his hands because it was this goofy thing where it's like, in order to learn this move, you have to take these chestnuts on that are like you know sitting in this fire and remove them without burning your hands, which is ridiculous because just to touch the chestnuts are still gonna be hot. But it was like <laughs> he was like, well, I don't get burned by the fire, so he does this thing where he moves his hands so fast he pulls all the chestnuts out of the fire and he doesn't burn himself. Like, but you're holding hot chestnuts. I don't understand. And it's it's also like in kung fu movies where you'll have these dramatic training sequences, mm-hmm. like you'll have um, you know guys sticking their hands into hot ash just to temper their fists so they can punch <laughs> harder and stuff like that. But I think like a lot of anime from back then had more influence in like Kung Fu and Hong Kong cinema mm-hmm. because like Fist of the North Star is like, you know, it's like Bruce Lee meets Mad Max. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Ranma one half, you, you've got all of that in Ranma one half. And even Dragon Ball, you know, it's influenced by Journey to the West, but also like Jackie Chan, there's a character named Jackie Chun in, in yep. Dragon Ball, <laughs> original Dragon Ball. So, I remember Jackie Chun. At, yeah, all of that stuff really has a lot of influence from like a lot of the stuff that I really enjoy from uh, Hong Kong cinema. So I I really appreciate it. I'm glad that I, I was able. I, I'm still on track. Then I was right. I was going to be yeah. on track. Uh, no, no, topic. you hit the nail on the head, man. All right, good. So Pernal, I'm the tangent guy. Rob, he's good for keeping on track of things. Okay, Pernell, take us but, on, uh, take us on a ride, Pernell. Well, I'm taking yeah, you yeah. on a ride back to the Turbo Graphics, so not very far. Oh, okay, oh, nice. So this ties back to something you said earlier i was kind of like man i hope he's i wish he saved that for 10 more minutes but um (laughs) this comes from the game jackie chan's action kung fu released on a number of systems apparently but the one i knew of it being on was the turbo graphic 16 and this is stage 2-2 from that game composed by masakatsu maikawa and i like this track a lot Listening to stage 2 2 from the game Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu for the Turbo Graphic 16, composed by Masakatsu Maikawa. So, and an obscure, an oddity for Purnell on this show, I have never played Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu, but the funny thing about it is that I've always known about it because it was one of the more highly advertised Turbo Graphic 16 games released in the West. Um, but I never really bothered to pick it up because at the time it didn't appeal to me. But what did appeal to me in general was Jackie Chan. Now, someone might be listening to this episode about Kung Fu and be like, wow, way to 
be pedestrian and hit it on the nose with Jack Chan. <laughs> no way, man. I could talk about that dude all day. <laughs> As you should be able to, because Jackie Chan is one of the greats. Like, if you didn't get, if you weren't into Japanese uh, movie, if you weren't into kung fu movies, rather, you still knew who the heck Jackie Chan was. Like he, he pretty much. I won't. He didn't. Obviously, he didn't bring it over. We had Bruce Lee and a number of other characters before him, but Jackie Chan. And you can t- let me know if I'm like off base with this, Carlos. I feel like mm. Jackie Chan kind of sort of popularized the concept of these films in the sense where just like he made them fun. Like they were more fun. They were more fun. And he was. I feel like he was. I mean, obviously, he was. In, he's. He is incredibly athletic, very talented, and did so many stunts on his own, and 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 could do so many interesting things. But I feel like it, it was all about entertainment. He was much more of an entertainer. Um, mm. Uh, I feel because it was more fun to. It wasn't just like, oh, he's a great fighter. It was like, oh, look at him like duck under this thing, and now he's got like a, a ladder, and now he's running away and jumping off a wall. Yeah, it was entertaining. Yeah, fights. it was fun to watch him. Yeah, like it was like those, yeah. Like, so, he's, like he's dodging fists, and he's like, it's not just like he's like, whoo, whoo. He's like, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's doing <laughs> crazy fun stuff. Right. So it's it's kind of like uh, for me, it's like a point counterpoint thing where Bruce Lee is like this kung fu Superman, right? Mm-hmm. Jackie Chan had to find his own path it, when it comes to Hong Kong cinema and just to be, you know, an action star out of the shadow of Bruce Lee. Because even when uh, Jackie Chan was starting to get his own leading roles, they were trying to mold him into another um, Bruce Lee. The same director that did a lot of Bruce Lee's older films, Lo Wei, actually directed a lot of Jackie's older starring roles too. Oh. And it wasn't until um, in 1978, so this is five years after Enter the Dragon in 73, 1978, Jackie Chan released Drunken Master, Ooh. which is the, you know, everybody knows that movie now, but before that, it there wasn't anything, there was like comedy in some kung fu films, but it was jackie putting the mark on like this is a kung fu comedy and that's uh something that became incredibly popular and like martial arts cinema after that really had to answer to what he did there and uh i mean that's in 78 so then i mean i'm sure you guys are thinking of a lot of the movies that he came out with in the 90s and i think one of the things that you were getting at is when you're watching Jackie Chan fight, he's kind of like an everyman, where it's like, yep. he's, 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 you know, wincing, like if he gets hit, but it's like comedic, and he's just trying to survive against an onslaught of a bunch of guys all the yes. time. So That's it, 100%. It, it, yeah, it wins you over. So you're, you're invested in it, but you also feel like, yeah, like this is crazy stuff that's really happening, and I don't think I could ever do this at this level, but I get it because I'm trying to survive just like he is. Yes, and, that's, <laughs> you know? and I think you hit it on the head there because, like, they would say, I'm making this up because I don't think this was an actual movie, though. I wouldn't be surprised if he's done exactly this, but, like, he'd be in a mall shopping with his kid and then terrorists invade the mall. And he's like, oh, no, my kid. I got to protect my kid. That so was the terrorists encroach on him. And he's doing his fighting, but he's, like, doing the, whoa, yikes. And he's, like, jumping around. And it's like you can get – it's like he gives off the impression that he's working on pure, like, anxiety-built adrenaline. And yeah. that, as opposed that, that, to, like, this you know, typical badass fighter who's like, yeah. That scenario, um, though, it was not in, like, the, like the, the fun Jackie Chan way. It wasn't Time Cop. Actually, really? with Jean Claude Van Damme, <laughs> yeah, he's he's walking, he's walking in the mall, and I think that he's attacked by people, or maybe it was like his other self attacks him. Um, not a great movie, but a great movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could say that about a lot of <laughs> yeah, films. right. Like it's entertaining to watch, but <laughs> actually, I, I like his new stuff. Have you seen Have you seen um, JCVD? Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. He he, it's like almost a reinvention, right? Like yeah. trying to become relevant again, and it's cool. Yeah, yeah. He's kind um, of like not not. He's he's kind of a, a self aware now. At the same time, you yeah. could tell he's still acting like a movie star. But he did one where he played like a a bodyguard. No, he was um. Oh, the bodyguard. No, the bouncer. He was a bouncer at a <laughs> at a place, and he ended up having to like you know protect some kid. And it was it was actually really gritty and, and pretty amazing that he's still able to do so much. But I wanted to ask uh, you, Carlos, do you have a favorite Jackie Chan movie? Like, like what one or two are, like, are at the top oh. for you? Okay, so uh, my, my number one is going to be Wheels on Meals. Okay. This is a mid-'80s Hong Kong film. Actually, it stars Jackie, Yoon Byu, and Sammo, the three kind of 
homies. Like they're uh, the three Sam, brothers. Sam Ho Hung, right? I've heard of him. Yeah, Sam Ho Hung. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, the film it, it's filmed entirely in Spain, and um, it was actually getting to the point in Hong Kong that they were becoming so popular they couldn't film in <laughs> Hong Kong. So they were like, let's go to Spain and film this movie. And uh, it, it ended up being like, it, it's one of my favorites. The, it has one of the best finale fights out of any, like, any movie I've ever seen. It's just, it's beautiful. Um, right behind that, I would put like Snake in the Eagle Shadow, which is a film that came out right around the same time as uh, Drunken Master. And it's kind of like using almost a lot of the same cast, but it's a different film. But it's it's super good. I love that a lot. Um, I'm you, you guys reacted to Drunken Master, so I'd imagine that you guys have seen Legend of the Drunken Master, oh, which yeah. is Drunken Master Two. That, one that movie also amazing. But there there's there's like eras of Jackie Chan <laughs> basically, and I could just pick my favorites from all. You know, I like Rumble in the Bronx too. Rumble yeah. in the Bronx was so much fun. I was, it, yeah, that's probably gonna be my favorite. Like at the very top. Yeah, 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 and it was so it. It was such a breakthrough hit. Hour, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's what I was, was gonna fun. say yeah. too. Like, there's different breakthroughs for him too. So, '78, you've got Drunken Master, and then like, at, I would say like around '80, mid '80s, there's Police Story, which was a huge film for him that's in Hong really Kong. Good. Yeah, and uh, then uh, that still wasn't him making it in you know worldwide scene, but I feel like Rumble in the Bronx really put him on the world map. And then, you know, beyond that, he would be in Rush Hour, and that was just, like, such a huge thing, too. Oh, I remember uh, uh, Super Cop. He did Super Cop. Yeah, right, right, yeah. The 90s were were good. The 90s were good for Mm -hmm. for Jackie Chan. And I gotta say, without, so we don't, I don't want it to get swept under the rug of Jackie Chan awesomeness, but you can't, you can't shirk the Jackie Chan adventures. It was a cartoon. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God, that that was was an amazing cartoon. Oh, that was really good. I can't believe there was a fun cartoon. A game based on the cartoon. That, I think there you, was a Game Boy Advance game oh, uh, based on the, the cartoon. That'd be awesome. Jackie! <laughs> yeah, yeah, Uncle. One yes. more thing. <laughs> yep. Love that show so oh, much. Oh my gosh, I'm putting it together. Now he, he's like Columbo. One more thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. The uh, other thing that was yeah. funny about that show is at the end of each episode, there was like a little Jackie Chan and remember segment. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it was a lesson. And, he, and it was Jackie Chan, non-animated. And he would talk to the audience. Mm-hmm. He was like, hi, martial arts are difficult. Try them anyway. Get in shape. <laughs> yeah. It was always like getting in shape or do exercise. But it wasn't him voicing the character, right? It was somebody, That was somebody else. No. Yeah. yeah, it was somebody else. And then he would just like show up like probably at the end of a movie set and record like 20 PSAs. <laughs> and be like, all right, roll. Um, all right, this is awesome. I love talking about Jackie Chan. Um, mm-hmm. So, so we're, you're going to choose from the next track. It's going to be Jackie <laughs> Chan Action Kung Fu 2. <laughs> you know, I was hoping, I, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of fond memories of playing the Jackie Chan Action Kung Fu on the NES. Because I remember being right. like a Jackie Chan game, like movie games were never good, right? Mm-hmm. And so I would, I assumed it wasn't going to be good. But it was, it's a really fun like platforming action game. Um, now, if you remember the premise, because I don't, was he playing through a series of action movies in that game? No, it was completely unrelated from any, ev- anything. He was just, it was just a platformer with his head on a character. Yeah, <laughs> it, it might, it <laughs> so might have been. No narrative. It might have been some other game, and they're like, you know what? Let's make it a Jackie Chan game and just stuck him on. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think it was, but it was published <laughs> by Hudson. Oh, okay. I think even on the NES, it was published by Hudson. Yeah, I think so. I think bo- both games have cool soundtracks. They do, they do. And, and it makes sense that it's Hudson. It's got that look to it, the big head look. I yeah. All right, we're back around to you, Carlos. What is your second track? All right, so the next track <laughs> that I'm going to play is The Pit from the original Mortal Kombat on Sega Genesis. And this was originally composed by Dan Ford in the arcade, but the Genesis version was arranged and implemented by Matt Furness. Mm. Getting with the furnace in the pit. Furnace in the pit. Hot. <laughs> furnace. <laughs> We're nice. getting ready to go. Uh, getting in the pit. There right, we go. That, that was a moshing joke.
You're listening to The Pit from Mortal Kombat on the Sega Genesis, composed by Dan Forden and arranged by Matt Furness. And Carlos, bringing so the heat, bringing the heat. Martial arts Damn. tournament. How do we spice up martial arts tournaments? How about we do it in another world called Otherworld? <laughs> 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 for me mortal kombat i mean i i was always a street fighter guy but you can't deny how cool mortal kombat was when it first came out it it it's basically like enter the dragon with big trouble in little chinatown it really is together. and, and it's actually literally <laughs> the reason why we have the esrb rating system it really is yeah, yeah. true and we, we were just mm-hmm. talking about how we liked how kung fu movies had those set crazy sound effects, and this game had those sound effects. Mm. Yeah, like they like they sounded like they were out of a kung fu movie. Maybe they took them out of a kung fu movie. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> and yeah, you'd always. I, I feel like these machines were louder than other machines too, because oh, yeah. you'd hear like the oh oh or I mean, bah, 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 or whatever. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. you'd hear that so much in the arcade. They probably were for a while, because you know how arcades were. How the more popular games had to get their sound chump popped up because they wanted to draw people to that machine and oh, gather yeah. around it. And also, Street Fighter would be loud. Mortal Kombat would be loud. For a short period, Revolution X was loud. That's how it was. Oh. When, I, when I worked at the arcade, Like when the new games came in, they usually put, we usually put them in, in prime locations. Uh-huh. And we would yeah. usually have the volume up higher than other ones. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Daytona, always loud. Always loud. I, that song yeah. is just... Never yep. quiet. <laughs> I miss mean, days when like the Simpsons and Ninja Turtles were loud. They were like the showcase games. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you have um, enough? Do you have enough length on the cord there? Oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. You're good. I think you can pull it. It's, there's an extension on it. But like one thing I like, take your head off. Like you, <laughs> if you think about arcades, right? I mean, I guess this could fall for video games in general, but I think it's especially you know prevalent for arcades. Like if you look at like the major game hits, right? Many of them fall on like a very specific narrow umbrella of game style, like fighting games. So it's like you could take one fighting game and not say be good at all of them, but you can transfer the skill slightly to every game. Mm-hmm. So it was like an easy jump to say, I play Street Fighter, time to play Mortal Kombat, you know? Um, beat em ups. Like they all, even though you had different characters and different enemies, you were essentially going from left to right. Rarely did you go right to left. In fact, I can't even think of an arcade beat em up where you went right to left. Um, but you go left yeah. to right, you had an attack button, a jump button, and hit both buttons for your special. Yeah. Um, every one of them was pretty much like that. Yeah, actually, uh, dating sims were the same way. I can always find my true love every time. Every Without every time. fail. <laughs> a lot of time with the same strategy, too. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it's just. Just keep mashing A. <laughs> <laughs> Which always makes me always yeah, laugh to this day, wrong. like, uh,. It was like a show called Excel Saga, which was an anime that I was into. Yeah, I remember years. Excel Saga, yeah. And there was this one mm-hmm. episode where they were riffing on dating sims because they were doing the normal show, but then whenever the main villain would talk, they would do it in the form of he was like he was playing a dating sim, but it was also overlaying the show. Oh, that's funny. And it was like a weird way of doing it where they would have the character oh, say something, yeah, and you would yeah. have three choices, and it would always be two random choices, and then the last one would be just like, put it in. Which made no sense to me <laughs> when I watched the show at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, "What the heck are they talking about?" I forgot about that. Excel Saga was um was like a parody of like anime and video games. Yes, it, it was, was so good. good. Thinking back on it, it was like way ahead of its time, but it was so funny. The one character who was always sick, and she would just <laughs> die. Like in every scene she was in, she would do like cough blood. <coughs> And then just oh, yeah, that's over, right. Or they just die, and then she'd be like, like the next scene. <laughs> it was just be so, getting worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. It was so good. Like and the funny thing about it is, like I feel like if I watched it today or if I watched it back originally, it's still surprisingly tough to keep up with because they hit you with joke after joke oh, after super joke. Fast, it's extremely yeah. random, mm-hmm. and I honestly feel like other shows have tried to do what that show did, and they never came close to pulling it off like that show yeah. did. Like I, they just don't, and I still own the DVDs to Excel Saga because it was that kind oh. of show. I think those DVDs are worth some money too because they Wait, I seriously. Don't, this whole show yeah, is for a while about Pernell finding money in his Pernell house. collectible. <laughs> yeah, I just learned Miss Adventures of Tron Bond sold for eighteen hundred dollars. I'm like, oh my who god, who bought that? I bought That's that game wild. on clearance. Man, I've been holding on to the copy. I have a copy of Pocky and Rocky with Becky for GBA. Oh, and I've whoa. got it complete. It's got the box and everything. And yeah, I just watched the, the 
price charting, you know, they have like a tracker, mm -hmm. and I've just seen that line just steadily go up and up and up. <laughs> wow. See, now, yeah, that's a so shock well. to me. But I think it's like, not so much that it's worth money, because I knew it was worth money, but I didn't realize you still owned it, because collector, collector shipping games has so... It's hard to even gauge what's going to be valuable at this point. Yeah, right. you don't, you don't I have know. No clue. Yeah, it's not always about scarcity. It's not always. It's rarely about the game being good. <laughs> it's just well, somebody I mean, like you, you were into it. like JRPGs like way back in the day. So if you hung on to them, you know people are looking for them now. You know, and that's what happens. Yeah, like, I think happen. it's the same thing. Like mm -hmm. for me, I would buy stuff that I liked, but I liked pretty niche stuff. And then now it's like turning into the stuff that I bought because I liked it is worth a lot of money. Yeah. Isn't that cool? I'm not, like, I'm not a, a collector, but, but, but I, you know, I have this, what I like. I will say this. You may not be a collector, but just for the sake of just entertaining yourself, you should join a collector's group or two. And the reason being is because you'll just be in your social media one day. And you'll see a post pop or someone will go, my Holy Grail game has finally been acquired, and it's just some game mm. you got in a clearance bin back in 1998. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> how much did you pay? As I happened trauma, I was like, how much did you pay for that? And he was like, I'd rather not disclose that information. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, right, right. wow. <laughs> years, years ago at, like, like when, just after Blockbuster closed down, and then, like, there were, like, these media resale shops popping up. Um, I saw a copy, a, a loose copy of Hagane on Super Nintendo. Oh. And I I wanted my friend to play it, so I bought it for him for like twenty dollars. And there's a little tearing on the label, but now Hagane, because what I didn't realize was that Hagane was never for officially released, like to buy. You could only rent it at oh. Blockbuster. So now it's worth a ridiculous amount of money. And I keep telling him, I was like, hey man, remember I got you that game. Don't forget it's worth <laughs> a lot of money if you want to flip that thing. Yeah, like I, I just wanted him to play it, but I, I feel really good that he still has it. Oh, See, good. that makes me sad because the alternative version of that story is me back in uh, like the early 2000s. I wanted to get a recopy of Earthbound. Like I used to have it and I sold it because I was mm. unloading all my old Super Nintendo games to get a Saturn. And I was like, I miss yeah. Earthbound. I want to get it back. So I went on eBay at the time, and there were two auctions going for complete in box, and I won two of them by accident. <laughs> so I kept <laughs> one, and I gave the other to a friend of mine for free. I was like, here, just take it. I know you wanted to play Earthbound. This knucklehead threw the box and manual, and, or rather the box and the strategy guide in the trash and just kept the mm. box. And oh, when he told man. me, I was like, why the heck did you do this? It's because... You know, it's just not worth keeping it around anymore. You know, it takes up space. I'm like, well, give it to me. Like, wow. Don't just throw your crap. Well, he did all his, his uh, PlayStation games. He took all the boxes and manuals and threw them in the trash. And now he's got all these games that he could have just flipped for cash if he I know. didn't want them that much. Now he just got DVD. I, you're yelling at me because I did that very same thing two years ago. Oh, Robert. <laughs> I know. I, I downsized. I severely downsized. It's like, it's one of those things where it's like... Well, I was like I, a hardcore pirate back in the early 2000s, so a lot of that stuff I couldn't really <laughs> flip. But the stuff I did hang on to, I was like, I'm going to get rid of it. The thing is, like, I have, there's nothing wrong with getting rid of stuff mm -hmm. that you don't use anymore, but I feel like in this day and age with the internet and eBay and all this, you know, like nowadays if I'm throwing stuff away, I'm checking like everything. Like the day someone showed me that that Kirby, it was a Kirby card from an E3 that I actually went to. <laughs> I had mm. that Kirby card. Oh, and man. I probably don't have it anymore. I'm still trying to find it. But that card sold for thousands of dollars. <laughs> what? Yes. See, but there's also there's also the other side of it too, where it's like, why are people still doing this? Like, this is like a bubble that's gonna burst, right? Like, so you want to get why? on the bubble before it pops? That's well, my goal. Yeah. The bubble's just gonna move to the next generation console. So I think you hanging yeah. on to your GBA games, Carlos, is the way to go. Um, car yeah. Cartridge-based stuff is always going to be hot. Well, because it's not even always games, though. Like, I mean, when I said Kirby, I didn't mean a oh, game. I mean a, a literal like a trading like a card. card. Yeah, you never know yeah. what, it, what it's going to be. And I have a garbage pail kit of Hulk Hogan that is now selling <laughs> for like a hundred bucks. Wait, let me guess. The name of this is uh, okay. Hulk Hogan. Is it Hulk Hogan? Hulk. Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Harry, Harry Hulk? <laughs> is it Hulkamania? I can, what is I can it? tell what you their names. We'll never die. So the A name is Hacked Hogan, and the B name is Russell Mania. Hacked Hogan. Oh, Russell Mania. Oh, perfect. I like that one. That one's very good. Perfect. 
Um, I can actually picture nice. hacked me, hacked, <laughs> hacked Hogan. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so um, we're going on to our next track, and then uh, well, Carla- like, hey, before before we well, do, I was that. thinking maybe we do it on the next track because we wrote this one around okay. a little too long. <laughs> so, sure, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. All right, so we're going to start up. Uh, we've talked about kung fu. We've talked about a bunch of different martial arts styles. But we haven't talked about the greatest, the most powerful of all the martial arts styles, Shaq Fu. That's right. Shaquille O'Neal fighting. <laughs> is, is, that's that's, that's just, the real Space Jam new legacy. That, yeah, that's that's really what it is. This is um for I'm playing the Super Nintendo version of Shaq Fu. This is Lost Jungle, the stage for the character Voodoo, composed by Raphael Gesqua. That is a journey. This is the Lost Jungle, uh, the stage of voodoo for Shaq Fu for the Super Nintendo, composed by Raphael Gaysqua. All this track needs is Shaquille O'Neal rapping on it. And we've got the full we got the full set here. I mean, this is a jam. Like this is I, I like this. This is pretty interesting. I was really into it. Yeah, it's good stuff. The game I wasn't as into. No, <laughs> but the music is good. It's it's got that thing <laughs> where like they added too many frames of animation to all the characters, so it looks super smooth, but plays like garbage. Yeah. But you know they mm-hmm. actually did resurrect Shaq Fu even for a time. I don't know how well it did. Probably not. It was very like well. a mobile game, wasn't it? No, <laughs> no, it was on the Switch. What? Oh, really? Yeah, it was a beat 'em up. Oh it's like a beat 'em up. Yeah, I remember seeing a trailer for it. It was called Shaq Fu: The Legend Returns. I want to say it was like The Legend Returns, and um, I came really close. Reborn. That's what it was. 
Um, I came really close to buying it just because oh, actually looks I was cool. curious about it. But the problem I was, was I didn't want to drop the coin because my thought was, am I buying it just because like, oh, wow, Shaq Fu's back? Or was I buying it because I actually genuinely believed it would be a good game? It looks really I mean, it, it, this, these screenshots actually look really slick. Um, I, need to, I need to see it animated, honestly. To some know. good art, yeah. But like, it came with like a Shaq Fu sticker and it was sold <laughs> at Target. And I thought about getting it, honestly. <laughs> but one thing that comes to mind now that I'm thinking about it is like, I think I said it on the break, is that so back in the 90s, we had a little film called Space Jam, which brought a famous basketball player, Michael Jordan, and paired him up with the Looney Tunes and gave him a wacky plot to play basketball against aliens because why the heck not? And it was entertaining. I mean, it wasn't a cinematic masterpiece, but I very much enjoyed the film. So, as we all know, recently some guy in Hollywood said, let's do this again with a new basketball star, but now with a lot more cameos and marketing. And I haven't seen it, so I can't comment, but most people I know that have seen it did not like it very much. I mean, I, I got to say the first one probably wasn't very good either, but we were young, young, right? Yeah, it was like, to me, the idea was like, it didn't have to be quote unquote, uh, I guess that's why I said it wasn't a cinematic mask because like, I just like the idea of like, basketball player being in cartoon world interacting with cartoon characters like cartoon all-star save the world it was like mm -hmm. it was literally cartoon characters yeah. telling you don't do drugs <laughs> and yet that was still entertaining to me because it was cartoon characters interacting with a human for a purpose i feel like like Sh Sh shack fu if with that were a movie it would be shack being like like beating up the drug dealers and then like finding the kids who they got the drugs sold to and then beating them up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it has to be, it has to have some level of marketing. So it would be like, who's Shaq, who's Shaquille O'Neal teaming up with? It's like, okay, well, it wouldn't be the Looney Tunes, but it could be oh. a variety of cartoon action no, stars no, from over no, the years. That's it, that's it, that's it. Michael Jordan is with Looney Tunes. Shaquille O'Neal's got the Hanna-Barbera gang. So he's, he's playing, <laughs> he's playing basketball with Fred Flintstone. You know, he's and got Hong Kong Fooey. Hong Kong Fooey. Oh, yeah. Bringing okay. it back. That's it's Shaq Fu. But it's got to be Shaq Fu, so they're not playing basketball. It's got to be a, a martial tournament. arts tournament. Yeah, it's and it's a it's a no-holds-barred martial arts anything goes Shaq Fu tournament. <laughs> and then I think this is a missed opportunity, man. I would have <laughs> loved to see that. There would have been so much money to be made. And if they didn't want to do a tournament and they wanted to go with the Legend Reborn style, they could have had a bunch of, like, either Hanna-Barbera characters or, like, action cartoon characters come together <laughs> to work with you know Shaquille O'Neal to fight like this evil force that was invading Earth or something. It would well, be great. Well, before we get a little too competitive, Purnell, or actually while we're in this competitive spirit, Purnell, <laughs> we have, uh, Carlos has a little something um, he'd like to share with us. Is it the Shaq Fu movie script? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess in uh, Rhythm and Pixels tradition, I put together a little quiz and what I'm realizing now is that I don't know if you guys want to compete against each other or work together, but um, I can keep track if you'd like. So right. what I did here is I have, right I'm going to give you guys a movie title and you're going to have to tell me if it was a real Kung Fu movie or if it's made up. Oh, okay, I, like I can this. work with I that. like this. Okay. Okay. So um, you, you, you tell us the movie title and then Purnell and I will think to ourselves what the answer is and then we'll reveal. That's right. We'll reveal it to yep. you. Okay. So I, I've got I've got ten titles here, and I actually, <laughs> the first one's kind of a gimme because I think we already mentioned it. <laughs> so the first movie title I have is Super Cop. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's, that's a real that's deal. a real one. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So uh, yeah, Super Cop. I, in Hong Kong, known as Police Story 3, starred Jackie Chan and Michelle Yeoh. And it came out in 1992 in Hong Kong. And then after Rumble in the Bronx was really popular, they brought it out in the States in 1996. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I had a yeah. feeling it was part of that, that police story situation. Yeah, yeah, it's the third of the police story movies. And the other thing that I can say is that in Hong Kong cinema for decades, going way back before this movie came out, Every film, they would redub the voices. They wouldn't record dialogue on set. They would actually go back after they filmed and <laughs> dub over the voices. So they never and recorded the dialogue on like like while they were acting. They would just right. act, and then they would just do the voices over again. Oh. Yeah. 
So up until this point, so in 1992, this film was the first Hong Kong film to use sync sound, so that you were actually <laughs> hearing the actors' voices on the movie. So I gotta ask this because this makes a lot. This makes another interesting point. Then, so one of the random jokes that people used to make about you know like um, Kung, Kung Fu movies, and even got parodied in like a bunch of later like you know American produced stuff, is the whole idea of the mouth moving and the words not quite matching. But yep. all this time, I always thought that was just them dubbing English dubbing over the original yeah. language. Are you saying that even the original product just dubbed over the actual action? That's right. That's <laughs> I, I never knew yeah. that. I love that little bit of trivia. Oh man. I'm yeah. And there's there's fun stories about foreigners in Hong Kong movies going and, you know, they maybe don't know the language, but the director's like, don't worry, just mouth some stuff <laughs> so and we'll sense. take care of it afterwards. That so they so a lot sense, of times man. Some of these action stars yeah. didn't even know what the story was for the movie. <laughs> they were just told punch and kick often. Yeah, yeah. frequently. That was the more important thing, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> punch and don't get hit. Yep. <laughs> That's yep. amazing. All right, all right. So here's the next movie title. Okay. Uh, Demon Fist Under the Killing Moon. Ooh, that's a cool name, though. But it sounds like a video game. I want mm. it to be real because it sounds just generic See, you do this enough. to me all the time i want it to be real but what's your real answer that is my answer it's just generic enough that i think it would have been done as a movie and i think it's fake okay i made this up yeah <laughs> so it is a fake so Curses, um robert and actually uh, so demon fist under the killing moon is kind of my own kind of wink and nod to like fighting game so killing moon is the name of akuma's track in third strike yes oh cool yep. that's, that's why i, that's why I have the connection he, oh yeah, yeah, yeah that connection <laughs> i was like i do a whole time i'd like akuma. <laughs> I cool. it sounds like a video game <laughs> that's a Kuma's, that's a Kuma's track title i am busting him right now <laughs> <laughs> you're busted All right, so All right. the, the next the next movie title i have for you is method man wait that's the name of the movie that's right. Yes, I'm going to call that real. I'm going to say that's... I'm going to say that's fake. It is real. What? I had so, the honest belief yeah. that he named himself after that film, and I'm learning that right oh, now. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 1979, also known as the Fearless Young Boxer, also known as Avenging Boxer. Should have put that this together. A, Should have put that together. Because think about it. 1979. Up until this dialogue... Do you know why he called himself Method Man? Because I sure as heck didn't. It just seemed like a random nickname he would get. Because he's the M-E-T-H-O-T man. Oh, man. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> I was all, this whole time. It was right in my nose. <laughs> Jeez. Um, well, uh, uh, obviously, me being a fan of uh, Kung Fu movies, I pro you know, I listened to Wu-Tang Clan. Mm -hmm. And, like, I knew, yeah, they all love this stuff. And a lot of the members are named after either characters in movies or the movies themselves so like master killer is yeah. the original title in the west for 36 chamber of shaolin was the master killer oh and um yeah ghost face killer is named after a character in the mystery of chess boxing let's see old db old dirty bastard he's named after old dirty and the bastard which is a, a kung fu movie so uh, yeah now that's but, the biggest surprise to be perfectly honest with you that he says but the, it comes from a movie too but the rizza and the yeah. jizza the rizza i believe was originally called the rizza rector the rizza rector oh. because he could the original group that he was in was called oh, i forget it was called it was horror rap it was um uh the grave diggers they were called nice. The yeah, they were called the Grave Diggers. And so Rizza and Jizza wasn't actually a form of un experimental electricity. No. <laughs> it was like ACDC. <laughs> no, yeah, it was the Rizzarecta and Jizza was just like the genius. So it was like the, the, the Rizzarecta and the genius, but they called it the Rizzarecta. That's pretty cool. Yeah. See, I, wasn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. I learned that later, way later on because I got, I, I have a few, actually saved um, uh, uh, Grave Diggers tracks on my on my hard drive that I found from, like, from old CDs. So I was getting into nice. like I was going through all my old CDs um, on New Year's Day, just to see what I had, and I was like kind of reminiscing on all this old techno. And then I found this, this this CD of all these old like tracks on it, and I was like, wow, they were really going into it. They were. It was like, a lot of rhythm. I feel like it was right before um, gangster rap. Like they were trying something new, and so it was all like about ghosts and you know necromancers and stuff. Always that was the trajectory. We <laughs> like, all the, what was all the rap about? It's about ghost hunting. 
Yeah, right? Uh, they could, they could, they, that could still be a thing, and I think people would be into it. It's about demon hunting in battles. Anyway, I'm sorry to take us on a <laughs> Wu-Tang track. <laughs> No, that's, that's why I put it in there. So, um, <laughs> All right, the next movie title I have for you guys. Dirty Ho. Oh, God, I want that to be real. I, <laughs> that just sounds so dumb. It's about a farmer. I mean, if we, we had just a, can't make enough money to get we, Now, we just talked about Old Dirty and the Bastard, so I'm going to say it's real, too. It is real. Oh, my yes. God. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty Ho, 1979, also. Um, it stars Gordon Liu, who's a legend in uh, Hong Kong cinema. It's directed by Lao Garlong, who's also a legend. Ooh. And uh, the, the movie title is in reference to a character in the film itself. His name is Dirty Ho Ching. <laughs> oh, man, so it it's wasn't a pretty about cool a farmer. Movie. I really was hoping it was about a it's, farmer who was down on his It's luck. not. Yeah, Dirty Ho <laughs> is actually... He's like a jewel thief, and he gets kind of tied up in this mess where there's... It's a huge convoluted thing, but <laughs> the thing that, that's really cool to me about it is this is one of those kung fu movies where um, you have a situation where there's a master, he's like having tea with another master, but it turns into this fight, but it's like a tea fight where <laughs> you're, you're fighting, but you're not letting people know that you're fighting, so he's like passes him the cup, but it's like this he kung throws fu move. Him. And then he like counters it, like because he already knows. Like they're both in on it, wow. but they're not revealing. Wait, when did that, that come it's out? Truly a fight? Because now seventy nine. Because you got me thinking. I wonder if Rama, if Rama one has martial arts tea ceremony was maybe has some loose influences from that. Hmm. It definitely. That's that's what I'm saying. Like there's tons of that influence and in stuff like Ranma and Fist of the North Star and you know like uh, even Ninja Scrolls stuff hmm. like that. Yeah, ready. I gotta go back and watch that episode. Ninja again. Scroll, that's a classic. Yes, it yeah, is. That's a good yeah. I think too. everyone had that on VHS. It was cool too, boy. <laughs> that's yeah, that yeah. was like one of my top like you said, top three. Mm-hmm. Like in when I was getting into anime, it was like Ninja Scroll, Akira, and I don't I don't know. I'll yeah. tell you one that no one ever talks about on the tangent of my old cartoon post. Um Shadow Skill. I've yeah, never I like Shadow bring Skill. That, up. that was a yeah. brutal show. Yep, and that's also like fighting, like a martial arts anime. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, I've got another title for you guys. Oh, this yeah. is Revenge of the Lin Kuei. I'm going with fake. I'm going with real. That that's. I mean, Revenge of the Lin Kuei. I mean, Lin, if anybody's going to seek revenge, it's a Lin Kuei. Yeah, I mean, Lin Kuei is pissed. Revenge is on the menu. <laughs> so what did you say? So oh, said, uh, Revenge of the Lin Kuei. So Rob, you said it's real. Yeah. Pernell, you said it's fake. Mm-hmm. Okay, it is fake. I made it up. Woo! Like, see? This is also a reference to a game because the Lin Kuei is the name of the like the Ninja Clan from Mortal Kombat. Oh, Sub Zero's Ninja Clan. Yeah, the whole time, makes... I was like, wait a minute, that sounds like a cold, cold clan. That's some cold <laughs> revenge. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to pull a fast That's one good. again. All right. You're much better. You're good at put you, 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 you and um, you and Chris. Yeah, you're you're gonna be making our quizzes from now on. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I, on Heroes Three, every once in a while, I like to put together a quiz too. So like, I don't. know. I guess I have a little bit of experience. <laughs> so um, the next title I have for you guys is Drunken Tai Chi. Oh, that's real. I want it to be real, but I'll go fake to split. No, real. That way, if we either both get it or we don't both. Get it. Oh, so I'm yeah. in the lead right now. I'm pretty sure it's real. It is real. Yes, yes. thank heavens. This is uh, 1983. This is actually the first film that Donnie Yen had a starring role in. Uh, I feel like I've seen this one. Rob was hopeful. I feel this, like this I've is where the points are going to make up the difference here. Like, no, you wait. Follow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool movie. I like it a lot. Um, directed by Yoon Woo Ping, who is the guy that did Drunken Master. He would go on to do stuff in The Matrix oh, and oh, cool. uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, he took the blue pill. Uh, Kill Bill. He did all the fight choreography. Oh, that's choreography for those films. That's cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah the fight, the fighting the kill He wouldn't have awesome. done any of those things. Yeah, all right. He would have been, would have been back to his office desk and done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, on to the next one for you guys. Like this <laughs> this film is called Legend of the Hungry Wolf. Oh, fake. Um, real. It is fake. Uh, that wolf ain't, they know <laughs> legend about a hungry wolf. He's just gonna get the damn meal. 
If he's a hungry wolf, so, he's going to eat. It's not a, it's the not a Japanese, legend. Yeah, the Japanese title for Fatal Fury is Garo Densetsu, which means Legend of the Hungry Wolf. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But notice how short the game was, because that wolf is hungry <laughs> and he ate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next film I have for you guys mm. is Heroes 2. I'm going to go with Real because you're the Heroes 3. Yeah, I'm going with Real also because my thought was that Heroes 3 probably spawned from that yeah, title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are good. Yeah, this is a film from 1974. And it star- it's about like the, the guys escaping the Shaolin Temple. So there's like... The thing that's really cool to me about kung fu films is that it's kind of like our like forefathers kind of deal where but it's like dudes fighting each other (laughs) so like kung fu movie stuff right so so you've got these legendary figures that like were uprising against the government in a similar way but in a hong kong film it's all like wacky martial arts stuff right it's so much fun to me so these dudes in this film are escaping the shaolin temple because the government wants to destroy the Shaolin Temple, which is a thing that actually happened. Oh. And then um, they went on to spread their martial arts because what happened was the government, well, Shaolin Temple would welcome people in and um, the government saw that they were maybe like dissidents. So they were like maybe harboring people that they couldn't get to and they saw them as a threat and they were also training martial artists, right? So um, it's kind of cool to me. There's a lot of movies that cover like the Shaolin Temple and Wing Chun, you know, uh, the Ip Man style that he trained Bruce Lee. Um, there's a lineage that goes way back to the origins of the Shaolin Temple. It's oh, really interesting cool. stuff. I do want to ask real quick though. So Heroes Two then became Heroes Three for you three. Do you yeah. do you guys have any sort of like characteristic association to the characters in that movie, oh. or is it just purely Heroes Two to Heroes Three? It's purely just something that calls to the stuff that we like. And then there's three of us, so um, Marty is the guy that came up with the title, I believe. And yeah, I think it's it's great. <laughs> but we do know Carlos is the greatest fighter of the, of the three of them. Because other, otherwise, <laughs> sure. the other two would be on the show today. Oh, I'm on the microphone, show. so yeah, I'm the I'm the strongest fighter. <laughs> yeah, the wise guy, the martial art, the, the strong man, the strong arm is Carlos. You got the wise guy. Yeah, yeah. The crack oh, actually, I was joking about that on, on the on the on the text thread. Me and Pernell were texting each other, and, and I was like, "We call it you're the wheel man." Pernell's got the tunes. Nice. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because Rob's like, "I'm the mastermind. You're the I, I'm the I'm the tunes, and you're the wheel man." And I'm just sitting here just picturing this whole scenario where. We're in trouble, and it's like I really hope Pernell's got some tunes to get us out of this jam. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like you got you have the getaway car, and, and Carlos is driving it, but you, he can't drive without music. So I'm playing Celine Dion, and we just like he just hit the brakes, like well, there goes that jab. <laughs> that job is done. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, number nine. This film is called Bruce Lee fights back from the grave. I'll give that. I'll give that <laughs> I want to give that a yes, even though it probably. Uh, I hope it happened before he passed I'm gonna away. I want to say that's a fake. It's a real movie, what guys. What in the world? Bam! So this film came out in 1976 after Bruce Bruce Lee died. Now, I'm sad about that. <laughs> I was like, I hope this happened so, before he died. <laughs> well, what I can say is that after Bruce Lee passed away, and after he basically, so Enter the Dragon actually came out after he passed away and it was such a huge hit it changed the world basically you know it changed uh, action cinema it changed you know culturally for like asians there was never like you know a huge leading man like this and it created a vacuum in a lot of hong kong directors and movie companies were like we gotta capitalize this on this so there's a, actually a lot of they call them bruce exploitation films <laughs> That just wow, capitalize yeah, on sense. his likeness and yeah, really. Uh, so actually, the the beginning, like the first thirty seconds of this film, are literally it shows like a gravestone oh with God. Bruce Lee on it, <laughs> and lightning strikes the oh grave, God. and he jumps out of the what? grave. And I'm even now starting it's to crazy. picture like there's like Bruce Lee films out there where they literally just took snippets of him from older films and just like this placed movie them in has the that. Films. <laughs> Yeah, right. And honestly, um, after... So uh, Bruce Lee was working on a film called Game of Death. And he was never... Mm -hmm. He never completed it because he passed away. But uh, they ended up 
putting together a film using the stuff that he had and basically like you're saying doing these kind of cut and paste situation to make a whole movie out of it so the wow. uh, game of death that everybody's seen yes it's pretty wild oh wow and the other movies would use like maybe b-roll footage from enter the dragon that uh they didn't end up using in the movie they'll reappropriate it for another movie there's <laughs> there's a ton of stuff it's wild wow. it's a good thing that man stayed in shape because he looks 30 years younger here <laughs> i think we got time for one more one more movie uh, uh yeah West Kibbe, this, this is, is it. Oh, this is 10? Oh, we're only Yeah, this 10. is the last, last one. one. Okay, great. Yep. So this movie title is called We Are Bulletproof, colon, The Eternal. Oh, that sounds familiar, actually. But is it familiar because you're doing a video game reference? I'm going with fake on this one. I'm going with real on this one. It's fake. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is actually, yeah. I went to my wife and I, I asked her to help me out with one. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a BTS song. <laughs> <laughs> you like butter. Yeah. You'll love this song. <laughs> that, oh yeah. my gosh. Bullet, we are Bulletproof the Eternal. <laughs> I cannot that's believe what, it. You've got nine time. out of ten. Are you serious? you got nine out of ten. I only got, yeah, I got, you killed I, it, I got dude. five out of ten. I got yep. them quizzes. I don't want to get. I don't want to talk myself too much because someone's gonna come on just like specifically just to kill me. Yeah, we're gonna have a. To be fair, I episode. mean it's usually Rob giving the questions out. He's not usually oh, yeah. on the other end of it. Yeah, well, I feel like it is a little bit of a competition still because I'm trying to stump him. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, 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 it's fun to me. I'm like, and then, and then I go, I'm not gonna go so far to say I'm prideful about, but if I actually end up screwed on, I'm like, darn, you got me. <laughs> like there's like a slight rivalry. Like you fooled me, Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get down to some more music then. So we're down to Purnell's uh, last track of his set. What do you got? Which is actually one that I haven't told you yet. This is a complete mystery. Yeah, it's a mystery. So oh, I was tight. having trouble, honestly, coming up with, like, a Genesis choice. Mm -hmm. Because, quite frankly, I didn't play a lot of games and genres that fell under karate or kung fu or anything back then, whether it's a fighter or games that had karate masters. You never played Last Battle? No. Oh, wow. Never played it. <laughs> so I did some digging and some research, and it took me a good couple of hours. <laughs> but I came across a game, Deadly Moves. This is Gal Loon's theme, and it's composed by Hideki Suzuki. Ooh, all right. Welcome back. You're listening to Gao Loon's theme from the game Deadly Moves on the Sega Genesis, composed by Hideki Suzuki. Wow. And okay, Pernell, okay, first of all, this track is only like 30 or 40 seconds long, and then that track from Shaq Fu was about four minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, what happened there? I don't even know. <laughs> but I, the thing about it is like, the track is short, but I like the sound. Like, it, it reminds me of... Like, not quite, like, Falcom Sound Team, mm -hmm. but, like, earlier Ease stuff. Like, it yeah. has, like, an early Ease driving yeah. beat going for it. Well, it does. And that that melody, actually, yeah, it, now that you say it, it, reminds me of something from Ease, too. Nice. That's really cool. That's just a... I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm annoyed that it's short, actually, because it's really <laughs> cool. It's honestly, believe it or not, it was one of only, like, two tracks from the entire game that I was like, I would put this on the show. But, like, this is definitely the best of the bunch, I think. And it fits the episode because this is, like, as meat and potatoes generic as it gets for, like, a fighting game plot where a guy <laughs> likes martial arts, but he wants to become better. So if someone tells him, here's a tournament where a bunch, you should go fight these other martial artists. They're strong. They'll teach you. So he goes to fight other fighters. Like, that's 
the plot. Yeah, it's um, it's a, it's very generic looking too. But oh, yeah. <laughs> but one thing I thought was that I actually ended up playing a little bit of this too. Like, yeah, I'm glad you brought that screen because I Gary mentioned like one thing I like about it is that the, all the characters have stats that are kind of like an RPG stats. Like, oh yeah, like speed, jump, strength, defense, and life. Interesting. Is that just is that something you can adjust or is it? No, just like just, so you know what type of character yeah. they are. Exactly. So it's like I think like this guy has high defense and high life, but he's very slow. And a lot of times, like games might have some kind of like structure, like the speed character or a power character or whatever. But mm-hmm. in this case, it is a hundred percent RPG esque as far as like how they display it, and I nice. kind of like that. Um, I do like the character portraits, like the character, like the versus portrait looks really nice. <laughs> There's that that Warren looking dude. Oh, he I, looks like he, he <laughs> ended up in the game on accident. <laughs> yeah, he's got like his eyes are all super wide, and he's like they, they found him, like waiting yeah. for the bus. Wait, wait like, a minute, <laughs> you're you're one of the greatest fighters in the world. People keep telling me that. And I like, don't know who said this. And like they didn't even like change his name for the game. Like, what's your name? Who's Warren? <laughs> <laughs> He's a guy who was he was he was just determined to be one of the greatest fighters purely by accident. The real great fighters, that's his name is Lauren. <laughs> but they got the typo on there. So now Warren's getting challenged by randos all the time. So the the last boss is a guy named Ranker who looks really cool. He's got um, slacks, like work slacks on, and suspenders and no shirt. He runs a fight club. Yeah, and, and then you, when you beat him, it says, You are number one fighter, and then it rolls credits. And there's Warren. Perfect. <laughs> Warren's like <laughs> sounds like a kung fu movie to me. Yeah, it sounds perfect. I'm I'm, I'm gonna save this picture and it's gonna be my wallpaper on my phone. <laughs> Warren, poor Warren. He I just mean, wants to go get. He just wants to work a mediocre job at, the, at the, uh, you know just doing. He looks thing. pretty buff in the game though. He's huge. He's enormous. He's got tiny feet. Tiny feet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> his knees and his calves. Look at his calves. He's got a problem. He's not stomping grapes. We can tell for that. He's got problems with his calves. Um, oh, walk around with those stubby feet. Unbelievable. I'm going to put this in the chat so we don't. So just so we remember it forever. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Warren. Oh, yeah. There he is, Warren. Great Good old Warren. Ghost. All right, we're going to turn this track down all the way down. And it's time for the part of the show that we call the bonus round. Uh, they call me bonus <laughs> round, they do. That's- I don't know why. Well, yeah, sure they stop. You guys are making video games? <laughs> <laughs> All right, the bonus round is where we play covers and remixes and arrangements on our theme, and we are kicking it back over to Carlos. What you got for us today? So I have an arrangement of Cheng Sinzan's theme from Fatal Fury Special. The track title is called Pangyago Hoho, and it's by the SNK sound team, Shin Sekai Gakyoku Zatsugidan.
All right, that was the, um, the arranged version of Chang Sinsan from Fatal Fury Special um, called Pangayo Ho Ho Hong Kong Stage by the SNK sound team, Shintakai Gakyoku Satsukuden, or Satsukiden. Um, man, that's awesome. I was like, yeah, yeah. When I was thinking about martial arts tracks, I was like, we got to go SNK because those their their um, super arranged albums are so good. I was doing yeah, I can't, great. I can't not bring a arranged SNK track <laughs> if I'm on the show. <laughs> that was a gem right there. Honestly, I was doing speed skaters in my chair. Remember the um the the one SNK track that Ed Wilson brought to our show that was all the voice actors rapping. Okay, party. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Never forget that mess. That's that's gonna get that's gonna get played more than once on our uh, anniversary show this year. I think. <laughs> was that within the four? Was that in like that year? Like this year? Period? It should be. I mean, it's gonna get it's gonna get played back to back with the dog song from Silent Hill. Oh, <laughs> oh of course. That's how I know it wasn't this year. Then. <laughs> Because she's like, I'm going, yeah. to, I'm going to make it fit. Uh, all right. <laughs> so uh, my uh, bonus round track is also from an SNK game. This is the arranged theme of Mr. Karate called the Tengu Show from Art of Fighting. It is composed and arranged by Yasuyuki uh, Oda, Adam Latz, Laurent Vemizi, Josh oh. Weatherford, and Santiago Shuri. Are those actually, those are like SNK like producers and like, um, like developers and stuff. Oh, really? So yeah, they showed yeah, up. Yasuyuki Oda is like the producer for SNK right now. Oh wow! So I they, wonder they were on the official soundtrack for this one. So I I don't know. <laughs> mm. Maybe they were. Yeah. Maybe maybe the actual maybe the actual composers were in the SNK sound team, and then on the credits list they just listed the uh, on these guys. I think that that's my that that might be what's going on right yeah. here because. If it's from Art of Fighting, I I don't think uh, any a lot of those guys were even with SNK. <laughs> <laughs> like Josh Weatherford is like a newer like SNK guy. He oh, like worked okay. on like King of Fighters fourteen and the new Samurai Showdown. Well, stuff. this Art of Fighting is much much older, and this this arranged yeah. album is also much much older. So <laughs> here we go. Yeah. This is the the arranged version of Mister Karate, who's got the the greatest name in all of fighting games. That was the Tengu Show, the theme of Mr. Karate, arranged for um, by Art of Fighting, and we're, we're just going to say it was composed and arranged by the SNK Sound Team. I because, think that's a safe bet. Yeah, it was composed by let's say Mo. Let's just say it was Mo. <laughs> <laughs> that's a which one was that? Uh, which episode of The Simpsons was that? That, that was, was the one where they were stuck on that, the island. It was like, yeah. and, oh, and the yeah. kids were eventually rescued by oh, let's say Mo. <laughs> that was such a weird ending to that episode. Um, okay, so uh, that definitely had an older sound to it too, uh, from Art of Fighting. So, Pernell, I think got this some- is a. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was gonna say real quick before we jump to the next track. I I think this is a great track because Art of Fighting and, and SNK stuff was like 
I love Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and stuff, but these games and their stories and their characters really was more in line with like action movies or mm-hmm. kung fu movies. The first art of fighting, like the plot, is like a kung fu movie. Like uh, the daughter gets kidnapped, and then the two heroes have to go and beat up everybody to save the the daughter. It's it's great. Wait, and, so in the arcade and, story mode. Did you were you able to pick any character then, or did they force you to use one of the two to fight towards? I think it's the either Robert or Rio. You have to choose, uh. and you fight everybody. Like the first Fatal Fury game, you could only play as like Terry, Andy. Yeah, I think maybe just Terry and Andy, or maybe Terry, Andy, or Joe, and they all take place in the same city, Southtown. And um, Mr. Karate is this mysterious figure. And he's like kind of like a grandmaster, but what you end up finding out is that that's actually Ryo Sakazaki's father, Takuma Sakazaki, and uh, it's like kind of like this very kung fu movie <laughs> deal, and it, it's it's great, and I love it. And actually, Takuma Sakazaki is based on uh, a real life figure uh, named Masatatsu Oyama, who is like the progenitor of like modern karate. Oh. And uh yeah, so he's also uh, it, like Ryu is kind of influenced by this man as well. And they made some movies in the 70s starring Sonny Chiba that kind of really really fictionally like <laughs> go over his life. <laughs> They're called Karate Bullfighter, Karate Bear Fighter, and Karate what? for Life. I'm starting to feel like the Bullfighter. Heroes 3 to have an episode in the near future where it's like Heroes 3, follow up to the Rhythm and Pixels episode. Here's more <laughs> detail on all that stuff. That <laughs> yeah, right. I've got, yeah, d- dude, I've got that in me. Like, I we haven't really gone all in and doing, like, fighting game and analogs with... Oh, I would love to hear like, that. I, but I know I can do it. I just got to put the work in to put it together. Mm. But, yeah, I just wanted... It, since you picked this track, I, I had to say that because it's such a cool connection. Yeah, that is a cool connection. I, I had no idea. I, I love the SNK games just because I felt... Like I like the the feel of them and like the way the uh, the, the the animation flowed and, and the, the the fight the, the game the game had a much different pace than any of the Street Fighter games, um, which yeah. always appealed to me. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, Pernell, your bonus round is nothing like either of yours, <laughs> and I feel kind of weird now, but I think it'll still measure up. Sure. So, like for the life of me, I really felt like by the end of the episode, I had to get Final Fantasy Four in here specifically because. One of my oh. most beloved karate men in video game media is Yang from Final Fantasy IV, who hails from the country of Fabu, uh, a country full of martial arts fighting monk people, basically. Um, Great choice. It's, yeah, thank you, good sister. You know what's up. You know what's up. <laughs> you yeah, went for, you went for the high five, and he's not here. <laughs> I was just like, oh, oh. Um, so this is an actual re- uh, cover of that done orchestrally by a one-man gang who goes by orchestral fantasy, and it's actually pretty good. So let's give it a listen.
Welcome back. You're listening to Babul's theme from the game Final Fantasy IV, covered by Orchestral Fantasy. And it's really great because it sounds one-to-one almost, but he's actually playing most of the instruments himself. In this. He's playing the wind instruments. He's playing the violin. It's very, very well done. And Yang is just special to me in the regard of, like, he was one of my favorite characters in Final Fantasy IV, and I only wish he got more time. But two things that always stood out to me most notably that I wanted to bring up was the fact that, one, the man had his special attack, which was kick, and it was an attack that hit every enemy on the left side of the screen. Mm -hmm. And thinking back on it now, I don't know how he did that. I don't know how he could just launch out with a kick and just, like, hit five (laughs) guys at once. But that just made Yang that much more special, I guess. And the second thing, of course, many who played the game know, I just find it amazing that the guy was on the brink of death. And... His love for physical pain from his wife <laughs> is what saved him because you you revive him by hitting him with his wife's frying pan. It's That's just amazing. Yep. Weird, <laughs> weird stuff. <laughs> the other thing I remember, and I'm maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but when he would do like his kick, wouldn't he say like "achoo"? Yeah, like, that's right. He, like yeah. he was sneezing, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he would like launch across the screen. It was great. I always thought that yeah. was like a mistranslation. Like he was going I think like, it's Hi-ya. going into like the Bruce Lee, like what the what yeah. y'all? Like yeah, yeah. I think that's just kind of how they thought to approximate that. <laughs> but I always thought it was funny because it was like he was sneezing. I, I mean, cause I'm saying like I always feel like with those things, like with kung fu movies, the sound effects they make, the sounds that the mouths make when they mm-hmm. do stuff, it kind of got into Westerners' heads of like if I do karate. I gotta do that too. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you make those like noises. all the screams yeah. and stuff. <laughs> or the, yeah, all the Bruce Lee vocalizations. The oh, you know, all of that stuff. So iconic. Like everybody's uncle was doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it was like too good, too good. <laughs> well, if you want to hear more information about the artists on the bonus round part of our show, you can go to rhythmandpixels.com where we have links to band camps and sound clouds and everywhere where you can get this music, buy the music, and support the artists. All right, thanks for joining us on episode 28-10 of Rhythm and Pixels. This is our... 16-bit, our summer of 16-bit look at uh, martial arts and and video games. Kung Fu. With Kung Fu Carlito. <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> thanks for coming on the show, man. Oh, thanks for having me. I hope I didn't ramble too much. No, oh, no, no, you no. rambled it just enough. Like, it was great hearing <laughs> all the stuff you had to say, the input. You taught us quite a bit, and I want to wager that a number of the listeners are also going to learn a yeah, fair bit yeah, from we, this episode. We learned some things along the way, and... Um, we learned the power of friendship is the true martial art. That's right. Yeah. Not, not that. <laughs> but um, but three is too many people for the podcast, so you got to go. Yeah. No! No! <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll fit you in. I got an idea. It involves a tournament. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a tournament. It's, it's, a, quiz, it's a quiz tournament? <laughs> yeah! Got to be... Watch out! <laughs> Pernell, Pernell turns around in my office, like sprawls out into a giant arena. And um, my wife, my wife comes in. She's like a referee. <laughs> she's like, I've been waiting to put on this striped shirt. <laughs> Car- Carlos has actually been doing this from his phone, and he's been driving here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos is ready. He's only sixteen hours away. Sorry, seventeen hours away. Yeah. Yikes. Um, did you guys run into each other when you were in uh, out that way? No, nah, timing didn't we work didn't. out. Oh, because right, like, but could, I, I was like, hey man, we're gonna record soon. So this is like next best thing right mm. yeah and i'm happy we got to record here together because like the timing like he got stuck working on the days where i could have had it when uh, he could have visit and the days yeah. where he could visit i already had plans scheduled like i had a Szechuan thing mm-hmm. and then i had the, there's no reason i went out there oh yeah yeah food was freaking great nice i'm trying to find a Szechuan joint in philly now because there's no way in heck there's one near us so philly Dude, is the best my bet. favorite yeah my favorite chinese place here in my city is a Szechuan place and it's it's so good. I can't believe how good that place is. There's Damn. a there's a place called something something Szechuan on Kirkwood Highway. Yeah, but trust me. But that like was I looked. It's not it's, it's not, not the real deal. Like okay. Szechuan, when you eat it, your mouth is supposed to go numb. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, well yeah. done food. Yeah, I had this food. It must have been like 10, 15 years ago. I know it's just salty. 
Oh, you mean at the oh, place on Kirkwood? Man. Yeah, man. yeah. Charles, I think it's one of those places where it's like they give it a name, but it's really just like the American Chinese food, and they may have like three dishes that they make this separates man, them from the rest. I'm, I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna have a restaurant called Rob's Fried Chicken, and you go in there, and all I serve is broccoli. Hey, <laughs> if, it, if you put some chicken powder seasoning on, it, bam, covered. Uh, broccoli Rob's Fried Chicken. Actually, that's you realize you really should do that now, right? <laughs> you should have a place called Broccoli Rob's. Because that would be amazing. That would be amazing. as a title for a restaurant. <laughs> it sounds like a new shirt idea. Oh, that is <laughs> do it! Do it! Do it! <laughs> At my last job, my uh, my old boss drew a picture of me on a on a broccoli stalk. Now, just to make sure that <laughs> we're all on the same page, you do know about broccoli rub, right? Yes, it's a vegetable. Do, no, wait, wait broccoli what? is a vegetable. Broccoli, broccoli rub is a vegetable. It's a preparation. Broccoli Rob, R A A B, Broccoli Rob. Yes, yes, just checking, just not, checking. Yeah, but it's not just a preparation; it's it's a food. Broccoli. I'm, I'm googling this now. R A B E. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's not just this. Yeah, outcroppings of broccoli plant. Oh my god! I did not. Oh, I'm learning something, something now. See, see. Yeah. Also known as rapini, broccoli Rob is not just the scraggly outcroppings of a broccoli plant or baby broccoli. See. And the leafy, oh. uh, it's related. Oh, okay. So that's why broccoli rub uh, would be an interesting thing. So it's not just mm. broccoli, it's baby broccoli. Yeah. And, God, and I thought, I and thought it was play like on your else. name. Double bonus. So, you know, just saying. Well, it's a, it's a big. Sounds like a vegan fried chicken place. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's funny, is broccoli rub is, is really famous out here, especially in Philly, on like cheesesteaks and other like hoagie type sandwiches. Oh, that's the first time I've ever had it. It was like, it was actually like a condiment add on to a steak. I was like, what the heck is this? Yeah. yeah. Is really that like good. kind of like a sprouts situation? Yeah, it's like um, it's like a fried green. It's like a, if you put greens on something, um, like spinach mm. or collards, and you, I, I, I'm assuming you would uh, um, like fry it up with lots of garlic and oil. Um, mm-hmm. But it's a big thing in um, a lot of Italian cuisine because my brother-in-law is very Italian. You can't just mm. call you can't call him Italian. He's very Italian. <laughs> very. He's not Italian. He's Italian. <laughs> he, he's, he's, you got to do the Italian hand. Yeah, yeah with the hands. Um, <laughs> Shut well, up in your face. Okay, we're going off track here. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Carlos, thanks for coming. That was Pernell. Come on. Don't, don't come apologize. on. Hey, let me have this dual <laughs> tangents. <laughs> Carlos, thanks for coming on the show. Did you want to um, plug anything else while you're here? Um, I mean, uh, right now, Heroes 3, we're on a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, like I said, we just covered uh, Samurai Cinema. But honestly, if if any of the stuff that I've said, if you're interested in it, you can go and look. In each episode, we basically cover a film. And we usually do like blocks of four episodes based on like a genre mm. or a group of movies. So if you find a movie that you like or if you're interested in a movie that maybe i brought up um i think pretty much everything i talked about almost everything we've done an episode on um check us out i mean if you'd like to hear me ramble i ramble a lot on that show too (laughs) hey rambling is fun i don't know what anybody's talking about (laughs) i i always worry because i get excited about this stuff i just worry like i'm talking about all this stuff and people are like all right carlos is talking about kung fu movies again rob was talking about the the roles Roll Rob's role. He's the real. Rob is the real. <laughs> he, my roles, man. That you bring it back in, but oh. <laughs> yeah, you're needed to keep the focus. But it helps to lose the focus sometimes because yeah, yeah. it drives like an extra level of like entertainment that you can't fake. Like you can't yeah. fake the ramble. Mm. Well, you know? yeah, you learn something new too while you're at it. Yeah, and we do fun mm. stuff sometimes. I always like to do April Fool's episodes. Oh, fun. Um, and I always I like, like to we celebrate our year anniversary. Actually, our return will be our fourth year anniversary episode, Ooh. and we're in the midst of planning that right now. Oh, so. happy anniversary, oh. Carlos. Thanks, man. That's happy awesome. Anniversary. Uh, that's, <laughs> ours, <laughs> I forget what year we're on. It's November. Yeah, no, it's, that's you not, mean the year we started? Yeah. Well, it's easier for me to remember for obvious I reasons. I think it was 2015. It was 2015. 2015. That's right. That's right. Wow, man. Um, anyway, if you want to get in contact with our show, uh, if you have a, a track suggestion, a topic suggestion, if you a recipe suggestion, a recipe suggestion, if you um, if you have a remix or a cover, or if you know someone who's in a remix or a cover band, we would love to hear all about it. And the best way to do that is by sending us an email. Rhythmandpixels at hotmail.com. And for a full track listing of this episode, all of our episodes, and access to all of our episodes, and links to all the other cool stuff that we're doing, 
is at our website, rhythmandpixels.com. You can check us out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. It's Rhythm and Pixels, all one word, usually. Um, check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Rhythm and Pixels. We have a 24-7 radio station playing nothing but 8-bit and 16-bit classics. I recently updated the server because it was um, it was overheating and dying a whole lot. So it's, it's changed up. I'm adding new um, graphics and stuff to it. And um, I actually have a lot more control over like kind of what stuff is going to be playing on it. I'm really excited about messing around with the, uh, the new radio station. So cool check spots on there. Yeah, cool spots on there now. I've, I got a little sprites <laughs> of cool... Uh, no, um, uh, the guy from uh, uh, Altered Beast is hanging out on the corner with Sonic. Why is from your way? Why is from your way? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely check that out. And if you want to support the show, the best thing you can do is just tell people about it. Say, I listen to a podcast and they say, oh, is it about true crime? And you say, no. And they say, is it about murders? And you, you say, no. And they say, is it about current events? And you say, no, it's about video game music. Now leave me alone. Hey, we, we inject <laughs> current events in years and times. What about them Eagles? Them, oh, man, the sports. We do sports. The, 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 them Flyers are, are playing hockeys. Yeah, when they got <laughs> when he got that field goal off of that puck, man, I got to tell you, they were flying. I was I was on cloud nine like a home run on a skillet. I'm still I'm still broken up about that guy who broke his thing doing that thing that one time. Oh, the flip. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I think the Olympics are starting. Anyway, you can um, you can also uh, support us by going to Patreon at patreon.com slash Rhythm and Pixels. You get access to a prequel episode every week. You get access to a monthly live streamed episode where we're just recording the show live. Um, you can kind of hang out with us and, and get all the visual jokes and hang out in the chat and, and, and hang out with us and make jokes with Watch us too. you go from Garbage Pill Kids in 2006. Yeah, I see us dance and sing along to all of the songs that we usually do. So check that out there. Um, you also get access to cool stuff on the radio station. We'll give you shout outs on the station, like little station IDs. Um, and we also like to thank all of our um, highest level uh, members of the show, of our Patreon at the end of the show. I'm already losing it. Um, so we'd like to thank Frankly Zappa, Mike Myers, a new Patreon member, Sean Dobbins. Excuse Ooh. me. Uh, Andreas Milberg, Brian Pitt, Cameron Worma, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. Hey, Carlos. I You're very you. welcome. <laughs> uh, Chris Wisner, a.k.a. Musashi219, also a new uh, Patreon member. Uh, Christopher Senstrom, Davey Cakes, David Taylor, Harold Howard, Wicked Sephiroth, Justin Schneider from XVGM Radio, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version uh, podcast. I remember that one. That was a good podcast. Bring it back! <laughs> I, look, man, I know you're a busy guy. You got busy things going on. You got busy things going on. Uh, but we love your show. So um, maybe we... Bring it back! Well, well we're going to get him on our show, right? Yes, and then we'll just tell him to br- ask him to bring it back after every break. I'll start recording this show for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also want to thank Reinhardt Zelkova, Sleepy S'more, Steve Miller, Taco, The Autistic Gamer 89, Ed Wilson from the VG Embassy, and Ulf Person, um, who I believe is also he's a, new. He also a new Patreon member. So a lot of new Patreon members. Um, nice. a, a lot of new uh, Swedish Patreon members too, which is really cool. That's um, one thing that's been one of the greatest discoveries that we've come to realize. Like the dev- like the like the breakdown of like mm-hmm. listeners around the world. Like we yeah. actually have more of an international listener base than we thought. Well, uh, Ulf uh, Ulf Person uh, recommended to us a topic that we cover just Swedish games and composers. And there's a lot of them. That could be interesting. Yeah, that would be a yeah. That sounds huge cool. Huge learning experience for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. It'd be well, fun to dig around and well, find it. He sent me a list, so we can we can get through it. Oh, yeah, I'm that'd in. be a lot of fun to do. Um, so anyway, all of you, thank you very much for your continued support of our show. It allows us to keep everything hosted. It allows us to um, you know keep us in uh, fine clothing and good drink um, with good microphones. Seltzer water. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, we're, we're riding high on the hog. <laughs> I don't want to ride that hog. He's, that's my friend. We're going to walk side by side and side by swap side. together. Uh, anyway, thank you everybody for supporting the show. Thanks everybody for listening to the show. Thank you, Carlos, for spending your evening with Robin Purnell. Thank you, Carlos. Yeah, my pleasure, man. It was great. Yeah, we'll have you back some other time. Sure. Maybe yeah, Robin on a three. Yeah. La Mulana 3, 4. La, la, the La Mulana name. <laughs> God, I wanted the La Mulana. Wait, wait. Son for, of La Mulana. <laughs> well, thanks for listening to Drunken the show. La Mulana. My name is Rob Nichols. Yeah. And I'm Purnell. You, you're actually Purnell Tholomew. <laughs> oh, crap. I was going to go. I should have actually been dr- the drunken La Mulana. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks everyone for listening to the show. Have a good night.
And remember, we talk a lot about martial arts and kung fu and yeah, cha cha, you know the sounds you make and all that stuff. And obviously, we were goofing about a lot of it, but really, at the same time, it's actually surprisingly fun to just kind of whiff those motions, like kind of play off those motions, like the punches, the kicks, the movements, the running. And it's actually surprisingly fit. Like it's it's a good exercise mechanism too. Like you just go out, you know, find yourself a nice soft things. Like throw some air punches, some air kicks, make the sounds while you do it. But what it boils down to in the end is exercise and have fun doing it. Get a little ridiculous. Take up a martial arts class and actually take it seriously if you like. Um, because actually, there's nothing wrong with physical fitness and also self defense. Uh, but. Uh, Honestly, it doesn't have to just be entertainment for viewing. You can take part in it and engage in it, too, in a safe, fun, healthy manner. So, martial arts! They're cool! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>